niches. They're not under the same kind of pressure that community colleges are. But my sense is also that nobody, in a way, is doing a good job of selling themselves, which goes back to some of what Juan and Chet were talking about in terms of their experience of going to Title III, for example, of needing to have research. Uh, you know, the catchphrase now, particularly in uh, teacher education programs, is evidence based. So, when should that be? And so, that seems to me that that's one of the issues that all two year colleges need to deal with is how do you sell yourself? And not just, you know, the PR, the sign on the subway or the side on the side of the road or your view books or whatever. But when I think about when I was in this department, everybody looked at graduation rates. Well, you know, that doesn't tell the whole story. <laughs> there was an institution I worked with briefly that classified itself as a four-year institution because that was a way of being able to get additional funding from the central administration. But hardly any of their students started as first-time, full-time students. And you know graduation rates are first-time, full-time students. <laughs> so when you looked at their graduation <coughs> rates, it suggested that nothing good was happening at that particular institution. So how do you go about deciding what it is that you're going to look at so that you can um, develop your outcomes and make those outcomes known to everyone. Um, I've also worked with institutions that would say, you know, always say to me, often say to me, well, you know, that's not, you know, this doesn't really tell you anything. But they also didn't have a way of telling me what they really wanted to tell me. You've got to be able to tell a story that policymakers, bureaucrats, um, regulatory bodies can live with, can sell to the public. I think that one of the things that happens is the public has a very narrow view of what community, uh, two-year colleges are, particularly community colleges, and that I think people still think that the main job of a two-year institution is to offer the first two years of a baccalaureate program. And that is an important thing to do, but it's, as I just said with the statistics, 51% of the students are not in the large programs. They're not doing the first two years, at least not what we think of as a traditional four-year program. They're not doing it, even though most of them will come in with the expectation that they will get a baccalaureate degree. So how do you manage that? One of the things I actually took out of my formal little presentation here, that I'll talk about a little bit, in terms of students' expectations, is this concept of cooling out, and I don't know if many of you have seen this, but it's a, a charge, I guess you would say, that's levied at two-year institutions where students come in with the expectation that they will eventually get a baccalaureate degree. If they're coming in, they're going to get these two years, they're going to move on and get a baccalaureate degree. But in the process, students' expectations about continuing their education are modified. Now, whether we do it, and I'll say we, I didn't ever work in a two-year institution, but I know working with students on campus, they come in with these expectations, I'm going to be an MD. <laughs> you know, and they get excited and say, no, I don't think that's for you. <laughs> so, you know, that's cooling out. When you lower your students' expectations, you're modifying them, and that some people in particular feel that two-year institutions are particular public units, partly because so many of the students that are served by two year institutions are disadvantaged. They don't have the resources, the network, the whatever, so that this kind of modification that may occur doesn't happen. I would sort of say it's a 
and the side that has a nephew. He's 20. He is finally graduating from high school this year. So whenever people would ask me how the nephew doing, I would say, still going to school. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so you know, half the battle is getting me. <laughs> So uh, I was talking to my sister and she said, uh, his name is Chief, so we might be talking about it. But anyway, I said, well, um, what's happening with Chief? She said, well, he decided to go to Kingsborough Community College. And I said, <laughs> I know some places you can go when you can get a four-year degree off the bat. You think I could convince him to consider this? She said, no, all his buddies are going to Kingsborough. I said, okay. Well, you know, she comes from a family where education is back. <laughs> Everybody's got a baccalaureate degree at the minimum. So him going to Kingsborough makes me a little nervous. <laughs> so um, she assured me that he and his buddies are definitely going to get their four year degree. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to modify the school in that effect because um, I will be on the case about what are the courses you need to take so you can go to a four year college. Um, so, you know, that's a, um, you know, I, I guess in a sense I don't have any problems really with people, girl. One of the things my, one of the reasons my, my nephew is taking so long to finish is that he does not thrive in large environments. Well, we know things grow is not small. So that's another thing that makes me nervous. So, you know, I got, he's got an advantage in that he's got his arm. But for all those people who don't have that advantage, who are holding out, what are the things you need to be aware of as you're negotiating the system, because it really is the system, uh, how well do institutions support students in negotiating the system? Uh, one of the the thing that I found that interesting was this notion about um, the, the writer talked about it as a charge, but I'm going to talk about it as sort of how you establish your legitimacy. And one of the ways that at institutions, particularly two-year institutions, you establish legitimacy is how well you can be accepted. Four-year colleges generally even the ones that aren't the greatest, get a certain amount of legitimacy just because they're four-year colleges. When somebody graduated from that institution, there are all kinds of assumptions that are made about what it's easy to do. Um, but there aren't assumptions about what a student can do when they complete a two-year college and have an associate degree. So ways in which legitimacy is established is how, how many of the students are able to transfer to four year institutions? How many students are able to get jobs? One of the um, articles I read suggested that community colleges in particular put a lot of attention into accreditation, faculty, those more formal things that are very similar to the kinds of things that four year institutions do where proprietors in particular, and again, I said there's almost no venture on the independent college, so I won't talk about that. But the proprietors, their legitimacy is established by what jobs their students are able to get. So it's about building relationships on two different levels. One is about where the, what their it's still about what happens to the students once they leave, but how are, how are they, how is what you're providing you? How is it accepted? Is it accepted because students can go to another institution, um, almost any institution of their choice would be the gold standard I'm assuming, or do they get jobs in the industry, in the businesses where you are doing your job training your, um, uh, career development with those students. Um, as I said before, there's a whole issue around emphasis on graduation. And I will say uh, that my experience, the education department is also an